Thank you for checking out Lakehead International's videos. You're about to watch one of our Lakehead International live webinars, a fun and informative way to learn more about Lakehead while also meeting faculty, staff, and current students. If you have any questions throughout today's video, please comment below. Otherwise, let's get started. And I officially want to welcome you to Lakehead University and chat about our institution on a global education scale. But to begin, um, Lakehead University is a public institution located here in Canada, more specifically in the province of Ontario. We're very proud to call two different hometowns uh, home, essentially, and have campuses located in Thunder Bay as well as Aurelia, Ontario. With that by being said and switching gears again to that global education scale, uh, we love to chat a bit about rankings. And so if you're familiar with Times Higher Education, they've actually actually ranked Lakehead University as the top Canadian university under 10,000 students in the entire world. That's their uh, world university rankings. The same company, Times Higher Education, has also placed Lakehead in the top 100 in the world for their global impact rankings, which are directly related to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, chatting about Lakehead and on a national ranking scale, we also place quite highly among many different institutions. So uh, we are recognized as the number one in Canada for not-for-profit research income. And Maclean's Magazine also places Lakehead as Canada's top 10 university in our category, number one overall in Ontario in our category, and first in Ontario for student awards in our category. With that being said, uh, we are very proud of our home being here in Ontario, uh, and being a public university, it means that we also offer accredited degrees. So accredited degrees speak to the rigorous testing and um, government organizations that review the education that we do offer and ensure that your degree, when you graduate, of course, is going to be the highest of quality. Students here at Lakehead are studying in over 85 different undergraduate and graduate programs, and they join us from over 70 countries around the world. We do have over 8,500 students pursuing those same degrees, and we do love the fact that those students, um, when they join us, are coming into small classroom sizes. So our student to professor ratio on the Thunder Bay campus is actually 15 to 1, and on the Aurelia campus, it's 13 to 1. All that to be said, Lakehead is an employment and career driven university and so we're very proud that we do have such high employment rankings. So 97.7 of our grads are actually employed within two years upon receiving their Lakehead degree. And to support that graduation employment, we offer cooperative education opportunities throughout several of our degrees here on campus. On that note, I want to dive a bit more into the academics and what you can anticipate you may study one day here with us. So our areas of study include business administration, engineering, science and environmental studies, natural resources management, education, sci social sciences and humanities, health and behavioral sciences, law, medicine, and graduate studies. Of course, today, though, we are going to be chatting further about social sciences and humanities, and on that note, I have the pleasure of introducing our special guests from the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies, and I'll kick things off by passing over to Dr. Jarman. So greetings, everybody. My name's uh, Dr. Jennifer Jarman, and I'm the Chair of Interdisciplinary Studies. I'm also a sociologist interested in issues of uh, social change and work and workplaces. Uh, and I was myself a, a student for at least half of my Ed, uh, upper education. Uh, I went to another country. I went off to England, so I know exactly what it's like to put all my belongings into a suitcase and truck off for a degree. So I look forward to seeing you on our campus sometime and talking about that experience. Awesome. Thank you again for joining us. Next, I'll pass it over to Dr. Denotter. Hello. Nice to meet you all. Um, I'm the coordinator of Media, Film, and Communications. Um, you can call me Alice. I have a, I have a expertise in English primarily, um, as well as visual media. And I look forward to seeing you all sometime in the future. Next, I'll pass over to Dr. Fiddick. Hi, uh, nice being able to talk to you today. I likewise uh, was an international student. I uh, from Canada, but I uh, did my graduate studies in California in the United States, and uh, my background uh, research is in evolutionary psychology and uh, 
that uh, is rather interdisciplinary, as I'll get to. And then uh, from there, um, had a job in Germany, had a job in Australia, um, a job in the United States. So uh, I, I know what it's like to live elsewhere outside of your home country. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. And last but not least, I'll pass over to Dr. Stevenson. Hi, everybody. I'm Michael Stevenson. I'm the program coordinator of the criminology program here at the Lake Edorilia campus. I'm a historian by training. Uh, I also work in the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies here uh, as well on the Aurelia campus. It's great to be here with you all this morning. Thank you again to our whole panel for joining. I'm really excited to dive into today's presentation. And on that very same note, I'm going to pass it back to Dr. Jarman, who's going to chat a bit more about the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies. So the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies is a department that has, uh, uh, is both a department with 14 uh, full-time faculty members and all and a number of part-timers as well. Um, and uh, and it's also a program. So so we sometimes people get mixed up about that. So we have three different programs within our department that we offer, and all three of these programs have a have a focus on combining different uh, disciplines to to examine a particular topic. So interdisciplinary study, we, and we're going to go into each program in in a, just a few minutes. So I'll just tell you what they are. So we've got an interdisciplinary studies program, um, and then we have an interdisciplinary studies and concurrent education program, which allows you to combine an undergraduate degree and teacher training. Then we have a criminology program where we have a mixture of people from sociology, psychology, uh, and different to focus on, on issues to do with crime. And then we have a media, film, and communications program that uh, Dr. Nanotter is going to tell you more about. But for now, I think I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Fiddick, who's going to talk about our two interdisciplinary studies programs in more depth. Okay, so um, you might be wondering, what is interdisciplinary studies? You might not have heard of this before. So the thing is, is that uh, we offer a, uh, a four-year degree where normally in a degree, um, the at least half of the courses that you're taking are in what's called your major. And in interdisciplinary studies, we have a major too. It's interdisciplinary studies, but it's made up of two different disciplines, as we call it, right? And as you'll see, there's about, uh, I forget what we're up to now, something like 15 different disciplines, anthropology, biology, chemistry. So, so we're sort of like the whole university in one department. And um, so you would choose two of these, combine them and uh, base your degree around that. And then in addition, we have what we call inquiry courses, which I'll get into. Uh, these are at each of your four year levels. And uh, the fourth year, um, the inquiry course is our uh, honors research capstone projects, which is sort of like uh, your sort of traditional honors thesis. Okay, so then why would you study interdisciplinary studies? Well, one reason is uh, flexibility. Lots of times students don't quite know what they want to study. They, they go, okay, well... I need to go to university. Uh, I've been told I should go to university. Well, as you saw, our our program is sort of like a university within a department. So there's a wide variety of different things that you can choose from. And the flexibility uh, comes in because you don't have to have half of your courses in one area. It's really a quarter of your courses are in one area. So you know, you can sample between uh, various areas that you might be interested in in your first year and then decide in your second year which are the ones that you want to concentrate on. Um, the other thing, though, is that maybe you know exactly what you want to do and, and you're not well served by, you know, a standard traditional sort of degree. So, like, for instance, I mentioned at the beginning that uh, my uh, area of expertise is evolutionary psychology. And suppose you were interested in evolutionary psychology, or maybe you're interested in forensic psychology. Well, your typical psychology department will have a class in one of these, or, or both, evolutionary and, say, forensic psychology. But that's normally about as far as it goes. So let's say you were interested in evolutionary psychology. Well, in my area, it helps to know something about anthropology and biology, um, but 
there's only so much that you could take uh, within your degree. Now, you might have some electives that you would take on the side in, in biology or anthropology, but in the, um, in the interdisciplinary studies degree, you could combine, say, psychology and anthropology. And why would you do that? Well, it's in the anthropology department that they have courses on human evolution, on biological basis of human variation and so forth. Or if you were interested in forensic psychology, yes, our psych department does have a class in forensic psychology. But beyond that, it's rather limited. Um, and, you know, this isn't unusual. Most, most psych uh, programs, there would be, say, one course in forensic psychology if they have it. But in, you know, in addition to uh, studying psychology as a discipline in interdisciplinary studies, you could also study criminology as a discipline. And, and there's a wide variety of courses that are related to forensic psychology in uh, criminology. So psychopathic personalities, um, uh, evolution of violence and so forth. And so you could combine these um you know, these different areas so that uh, you have an even uh, greater um, depth of knowledge, say, in forensic psychology across the both of them. And then uh, the real world itself is not disciplinary. So um, often it helps to know a variety of different things in solving various problems that might confront you in real life. My favorite example here is the origins of science, for example, in say, uh, Northern Italy, you might have heard, for example, of uh, Galileo. Well, Galileo um, studied in a art institute, well, a design institute, where they were doing interdisciplinary uh, investigations of both a scientific and artistic nature, um, starting with things like drafting, drawing, and so forth. Um, Anyhow, so next slide, where I'll get into this. Uh, uh, well, actually, it's the one on inquiry course, but I'll say a bit more about our concentrations here. So, um, you know, it might seem, well, isn't that a bit of a free for all, you know, all these different areas? How am I going to, you know, uh, use which ones to do? Well, we also offer four different concentrations, as we call it, where um, there are disciplines that have natural affinities for one another. So, uh, for example, um, environment and politics and culture, um, it's, it's a sort of uh, environmental issues are very popular these days, but not just in the standard sort of disciplines that you would expect, like, say, geography and, and, and so forth. Um, there's also a lot of people in the arts, uh, sorry, in, in literature writing um, about, uh, you know, ecological dystopias and so forth. And uh, so in environment and politics and culture, um, there you might study or focus on courses that, uh, you know, address environmental issues from uh, English, uh, uh, politic, uh, political science, sorry, uh, media studies, so forth. Uh, human nature, this is more my area where uh, the areas that contribute to it are anthropology, biology, psychology, sociology, English, and criminology. Uh, international conflict and human rights draws upon history for uh, to a large degree, English, uh, political science, uh, social justice draws upon English, sociology, uh, media studies, and I'm probably forgetting something else there, but uh, maybe we'll go to the next uh, slide. Okay, so how do we teach in IS? So the thing is, is that your standard sort of uh, courses are, you know, the prof gets up there and lecture and so forth, but we try to encourage instead uh, critical thinking, problem solving, uh, where you bring together the specialized knowledge that you've acquired in disciplinary courses. Uh, some of the courses involve experiential hands-on learning, but the sort of key to our program are these uh, inquiry-based uh, uh, learning courses. And um, these are at each of the four levels. So next slide, I'll, I'll explain this in more detail. So what are these inquiry courses? Well, Again, like I said, your standard sort of university courses, the prof gets up there, lectures, and uh, students then have to, you know, 
regurgitate later on an exam or in a paper what they've learned uh, from the professor and the lecture. But um, uh, in an inquiry course, it's more sort of problem-based. So I'll give you an example. I teach the first year inquiry into human nature. Um, I don't have any exams in the course. Um, one of the things that I do do is I, at the very beginning of the term, I give students a problem. And the problem is that um, I tell them, okay, you are Louise Lanfair. You are the president of the American Anthropological Association. And you just received this email from your colleagues that uh, is alleging that one of the members of the association has um, killed off hundreds, if not thousands of these indigenous South Americans. What are you going to do about this? And this is a real, um, a real event that happened uh, in, in the 2000s. And so I say to students, okay, you're gonna have to deal with this problem as the president of the AAA, what are you going to do, right? And I don't mark them on whether or not they get the right answer. I mark them on, you know, the research that they put into this, um, you know, uh, how well do they uh, find sources of information? How well do they document them? Do they reference them? Um, how, how convincing are their arguments and so forth? And there's a, a series of different assignments that they have to do um, for this. They have to... Uh, come up with a bibliography. They have to uh, write a press release for that gets distributed in advance of a press conference. Um, they act as journalists at that press conference. They write a newspaper article based on the, that press conference. And then they have to um, write a group reflection, um, uh, sort of giving their sort of uh, understanding of how this relates to the topic of the course and so forth. And so this involves, as, as you can see, like um, a sort of case study approach, um, some of its group work, some of its individual work. And then um, uh, we also have disciplinary courses as well. So like I said, you take two different disciplines and these would be courses like world cultures and anthropology, mass media and politics, which is cross-listed between media studies and political science, uh, sex, violence, and power. And I forget where that one <laughs> comes from. Ancient peoples and places is anthropology, environmental biotechnology from uh, either uh, biology or environmental uh, sustainability, I forget. Astronomy is a general science course. Forensic psychology is both criminology and psychology. All right, next slide. Okay, so um, uh, Dr. Jarman mentioned concurrent education. So what is concurrent education? Well, this is where you would study for uh, an education degree at the same time that you're studying for your bachelor's degree um, that in um, most jurisdictions in Canada and definitely in Ontario, you need a bachelor's degree before you can get into a teaching program, right? And um, so, so what you can do with this degree is you would start your interdisciplinary studies degree, take a few courses in education, like introduction to teaching, introduction to education, and then a third year elective on some teaching topic. And then um, provided you meet the uh, minimum uh, grade requirement, you're guaranteed to get into the professional program. So this is one of the key things about concurrent education is that, um, there are um, minimal requirements to get into the professional program. And if you're in concurrent education, you're guaranteed to get in, to get a spot provided that you meet those minimal requirements. Whereas uh, the other sort of option that you find at many places, and you find at Lakehead too, is a consecutive program, which is where you would do your bachelor's degree, and then once you finish that, then you have to apply yet again to get into the uh, professional education program. And although there are minimal requirements, if you meet them, you don't necessarily get in, right? So this is one of the advantages of concurrent education. So right now on this campus, um, we have uh, a primary junior option in uh, concurrent education. Primary junior, if you're not familiar, is, is just basically um, 
elementary uh, school level, right? Primary elementary school level, and then intermediate seniors high school level. Um, we don't have concurrent education for the high school level, the intermediate senior, but on this campus, there is a consecutive program. So once you finish your interdisciplinary studies degree, you can apply to get into the intermediate senior on the same campus. Uh, why do I bring this up? Because um, for intermediate senior, you need what's called teachable subject areas. So, you know, in high school, you might be teaching students English, or you might be teaching them geography or history or something like that. And um, to get into the intermediate senior program, you need two such teachables. And this makes uh, the interdisciplinary studies program where you need two disciplines uh, ideal. So uh, amongst the... Um, Teachable subject areas that are supported on the Aurelia campus are English, geography, history, and social science general. Each of those uh, you can pick up in the uh, interdisciplinary studies degree. We don't have a discipline in social science general, but that would be, you know, you could pick that up with, um, you know, a discipline in psychology, uh, sociology, so forth, and, and then supplement it with some other courses. Um, uh, women's studies also is, 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 uh, contributes to social science general. And so then, you know, you would supplement it with some courses from those other areas. All right. Um, I think that's all for me. And uh, it's been uh, my privilege to talk to you. And uh, hopefully I look forward to seeing you here sometime soon. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing more about interdisciplinary studies. Of course, if you want to learn more about this program, you can also head over to our website. But uh, for the time being, we're going to pass over to Dr. Stevenson to chat more about criminology here at Lakehead University. Thanks very much, Jordan. I'm just going to provide a um, brief overview here of the criminology program uh, offered at the Aurelia campus of Lakehead. It's a very thriving, dynamic program we have here in criminology, about 200 plus majors. Uh, registered in the criminology program um, on the Aurelia campus. Um, it primarily is a, a four-year degree. We'll come back to some other options a little bit later. Uh, and the focus is really interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary. Um, criminology incorporates uh, other disciplines like sociology, psychology, and political science. Uh, we also have a forensic science component uh, to our degree structure as well. Students registered in the program have a range of kind of core criminology courses that they're required to take, uh, but there is a lot of elective room in our program. Uh, about 40% of the courses students will be required to take are criminology, um, but you can also um, branch out into other, other disciplines as well with your, your elective offerings um, so if you want to combine your criminology core courses with some of these other disciplines like political science, psychology, or sociology, students really have the opportunity to, to do that as well. The criminology program is a part of the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies. The inquiry courses that Dr. Fittick talked about in the IS program, criminology students are also required to take those classes at the first and third year levels as well. Again, critical thinking, bringing kind of an inquiry-based approach to the um, to the topic of criminology. Um, that's the, the core component of those inquiry classes, again, offered at the first and third year uh, levels. We do have a fourth year research class that's available for students to take. Usually these are students who are planning to go on to uh, graduate work uh, beyond the undergraduate degree, um, but we do have that research intensive class available for, uh, for students. The criminology program here at Lake Aurelia, indeed for uh, virtually all criminology programs across Canada. Uh, we don't have a co-op program as part of our criminology degree, uh, but what we've done is kind of flip the traditional co-op model instead of sending students out uh, into the into the field per se, uh, we bring the professional practitioners in uh, to the Aurelia campus. So we have a required fourth year course, Prim 4035, uh, professional field exposure. This is where we bring in practitioners, lawyers, 
uh, police officers, parole officers, uh, to really give students a good understanding of what the career options are uh, once they complete their, uh, their degree in criminology. So again, a, a very interesting program that's been put together here. Um, the criminology program has been active for about 10 years or in, in existence for about 10 years. Um, and students are really, uh, uh, really happy with their studies um, once they, they graduate from the, from the program. I mentioned a moment ago, there are a few other options you can take in terms of criminology. We're focusing on the, the four-year HBASC uh, major here primarily, uh, but if you're in another program, uh, you can do a minor in criminology. And as Dr. Fittick mentioned, you can take criminology as one of the disciplinary areas um, that, are a that are a function of the, the IS major degree uh, that was covered earlier uh, in, the, in the presentation. We do have three kind of themes uh, underpinning the criminology major here at Lake Aurelia. Uh, we look at forensic science and criminalistics. Uh, we focus on law and legal institutions. And we also have a, um, a pillar, a third pillar, looking at social justice and human rights as well. To take care of all of these three pillars, we have a very broad range of courses that students can, can take. Um, at the second year level, uh, youth crime and justice, criminal law, uh, gender and crime at the third year level, a very wide range of uh, terrific courses, forensic psychology, uh, cyber crime, policing, uh, death investigation. Uh, at the fourth year level, we have a very, number, a very large number of uh, very focused uh, advanced seminar courses, specifically geared to the research expertise of a given uh, faculty member. Comparative criminology, uh, psychopathy, um, just a wide range of, of, of really fascinating courses uh, for students in the in the final year uh, of their of their program. Next slide, please, Jordan. So, for those of you joining us next year um, on the Aurelia campus in the first year of the criminology program, here's the the course structure or your first year structure in terms of the courses that you would be uh, taking. There are two required courses. Uh, CRIM 1010 is the Introduction to Criminology class, and CRIM 1030 is the Introduction to Criminalistics class, that forensic science side of the, of the criminology equation uh, that's part of our program here um, at Lakehead Aurelia. As we mentioned a moment ago, all first year students take that Interdisciplinary Studies Inquiry class uh, at the first year level. Again, critical thinking, um, you know, framing questions, uh, bringing outside information to the study of a particular topic. Um, all criminology students take um, one of those first year interdisciplinary studies courses that are offered uh, by our department. I mentioned a moment ago that the criminology program is interdisciplinary in scope. Um, all criminology students are required to take uh, one of these four courses, the um, introductory psychology course, the introductory sociology course. Um, and there are two political science courses that are a possibility um, as well, the intro to political science course and the introduction to law course. There are two and a half FCEs of elective offerings for students in the first year of the program. Um, this goes back to what I said a few moments ago. You can um, really branch out um, beyond just core criminology courses. So um, students, if they take, for instance, the introduction to psychology class, very frequently as electives, they will take one or more of the other courses in these disciplines that feed into criminology. Um, in your elective choices. You can also go well beyond anything related to criminology. Um, you know, you could you could take, um, you know, media, film and communications courses or uh, history classes or geography courses. Um, you know, students come in with a variety of different approaches in terms of what they want their first year to accomplish. 
Um, some of them take the required courses and then look for their electives to kind of broaden their their intellectual and academic horizons. Some people come in looking to try to find as many courses as possible that are directly uh, feeding into uh, the broad study of, of criminology. So the program is flexible by design, interdisciplinary by design, um, and it's a program that we're really proud to, to offer here uh, at, at Lake Edaroya. And uh, we'd be thrilled to have uh, international students joining us here uh, on the Aurelia campus in the, the upcoming academic year um, who are interested in, in studying criminology um, at, at Lakehead University. Awesome. Thank you again for sharing more about that. It's always exciting to hear about uh, a growing program and, and one that's intriguing to me personally as well. I did criminology courses in my undergrad at Lakehead, some of the online ones. I was a Thunder Bay student, but I was able to pursue some of my own passions and interests uh, through that interdisciplinary approach, essentially. And last but not least, uh, chatting a bit about media, film, and communications, I have the pleasure of passing over to Dr. Din Otter. Hi. So what's interesting is that almost half of our students in this program of media, film, and communications at Lakehead are international. So you will have the opportunity to meet a lot of students from all around the world. And, and that is very exciting. And it, it gives a lot of energy to this program. This is a four year honors degree, although again, you could also do a minor or even a specialization with inter interdisciplinary studies. Um, but I'm gonna just talk about the four year degree at this point. And what we're trying to do is to combine um, the analysis, the, the learning, the studying part of media and hands-on production. And, and that is a really lovely combination um, that can lead to so many possibilities once you graduate. So in this degree, you'll learn about different approaches and methods for analyzing media, film and communications. And those topics are so wide ranging. They can be from media convergence and ownership to media representations of race, class, gender, sexual orientation, and ability. And as well, they cover a lot of different grounds. Some are, are more local in terms of, of media production. Um, some concern mass or mainstream media, social media, um, as well as global forms of media, um, which are always changing in today's dynamic fluid media context. As I said, you, would, you will also be producing media and have the opportunity to become involved in media movements that are fighting for social change, um, including medium democracy, alternative media, and social media. The first year of the program um, involves three required courses that introduce you to print, uh, visual media, and production. So three separate focuses there, but you'll also be taking a course um, that has to be from either visual arts or um, it can focus on photography um, as part of this program. And then you have elective options. There is a required first year interdisciplinary inquiry course at first and third year level, the same way as for all of our interdisciplinary programs, um, which again, help develop critical thinking um, problem solving skills, um, and give you the opportunity to work with other students who are in other programs. At the second year, um, we tend to give you a broad multimedia background. Um, this includes research skills, um, theoretical skills, particularly with respect to alternative new media and social media. Um, as well as a uh, required production course in either video production or intermedia production. And then again, there are electives. Um, in fact, what I should note is, is that half of the program is focused specifically on media, film, and communications course, the, uh, courses. The other half um, consists of electives. And a lot of students choose to take as many media, film, and communications courses as possible but others choose to take as many visual arts courses as possible or um, creative writing courses. And in fact, you have the opportunity to complete a minor in one of those other areas as well. Um, 
while I'm on that minor topic and while I'm still in first and second year here, um, I should note that we have a couple of students who are also completing a global entrepreneurial um, certificate with the with the Department of Business. Um, and it's part of this program. It, it, it's just a way of, of uh, shaping your electives to come out with not only the degree, but also the certificate when you graduate. Within the program at third year, um, there are more advanced analysis and production courses, particularly um, courses that are devoted to representations of media, uh, things, for example, like sexuality in media, um, globalizing discourses of dissent, um, as well as more specific production courses, such as cinematography, uh, web design. Um, graphic design is, is offered from the visual arts department, um, and as well as, as advanced intermedia uh, de development and uh, sound production and post-production. So the, the courses are rotated, but if every year you take the options that are available to you, you should be able to complete quite a few of those production courses if that's of interest. At the fourth year level, we have small seminars and projects, uh, courses like media and environmental justice movements, global indigenous media, as well as your major um, media, film and communications project, which usually is a combination of research and creation. And though, again, those fourth year classes are very small. Um, they're again capped at around 15. Um, what I should say is that the other classes are also similarly small in scope um, with the largest class containing about 50 students um, at first year. So I've already mentioned this hands-on multimedia aspect. Uh, that's really, really important um, to enable you to graduate with multiple production proficiencies in print, image creation, video, audio, and online media. And you can focus on more print or more video, uh, more sound, depending on your personal interests. We have computers available at the Aurelia campus, and we encourage students to acquire facility in multiple platforms. And the production courses um, slowly help you develop those skills, especially the Adobe Creative Suite, which is often the industry standard in media production. At the first year level, we often um, encourage you still to use your mobile media devices. Um, there are apps available to even control things like lighting, um, shutter speed, all of that. Um, but as, as we develop into second, third, and fourth year, uh, you will need more, more sophisticated equipment. And for that, um, the wonderful advantage in our program is that you can borrow some of this equipment from the library. So just the same way that you can sign out a book, you can sign out a camera. We've got um, camcorders, we've got various cameras and accessories. We've got lights, microphones, uh, tripods, audio recorders, and so on. And those usually are um, restricted to a two day uh, borrowing time so that other students can borrow them as well. And, and during major project seasons, uh, they are continually being used. We have high caliber faculty. Um, we're, we're so pleased that our media creation instructors are often world renowned artists and filmmakers. Um, they have real life experience. The media analysis instructors similarly have won teaching and research awards. And I particularly want to draw attention to Dr. Uh, Jeppesen, who is a professor in media, film and communications, who has published several books and is currently um, a research chair uh, doing investigations with international research groups. Her most recent publications have focused on um, global um, approaches to negotiating power um, and a 
her most recent is about cap the Capitol riots in America. Um, and the subtitle of that is Digital Media uh, Disinformation and um, Empowering Work. Sorry, I can't remember my own writing. Sorry, and Democracy um, Media. So the, the uh, a background of the faculty is really quite significant and, and will make a difference to your experience at Lakehead. Additional program features that tend to be quite exciting um, involve, first of all, the internships. There are two optional internships available for you, for anyone in the program. Usually they are completed in your third and fourth year. Um, they're, they give you real life experience in a local workplace, um, such as the Aurelia Museum of Art and History, Rogers Television, the Aurelia Opera House, uh, we're continually adding new internships as we go along. They involve five hours per week for 12 weeks. Um, they're unpaid. However, for each internship, you are getting a course credit. So that is definitely um, worth trying. We also offer occasional research assistantships, which are paid. Um, and these enable you particularly at the upper level, to work with faculty directly doing media research. And then finally, I think the fourth year projects are worth mentioning because these are projects where students combine research and creation. Um, in our, our recent cohort, uh, we had several people producing podcasts, producing their own documentary films. Um, and in some cases, they're they're just simply writing screenplays, writing um, various other things for social media. Every year, every year in the spring, we offer a media art showcase. Um, sometimes it's held at the Aurelia Museum of Art and History, which is what is on display in the photo here. Uh, sometimes it's held, um, we've, we've had it in the Aurelia Public Library. Last year we held it at Lakehead and it's very likely that we will be holding it at Lakehead in the cafeteria um, this coming year. The showcase features works of video, sound, photography, memes, web design, interactive sculptures and other digital media so that the range is really quite large. And that reminds me for a moment, what I should note is that when you apply to the program, you do need to submit a portfolio um, it only requires two to seven items. Um, they range from photography to art, to video, to creative writing. Uh, we've seen podcasts, videos, um, PowerPoint presentations. It's really, really wide ranging. Just check out our, our website and those portfolios would get sent directly to me. So I'm quite excited about the program. Looking forward to meeting some of you in the future. Awesome. Thank you very much for sharing more about that program. It's also another uh, very interesting program, especially within our office. Even my my director would love to pursue that program one day. Um, on that note, uh, as we sort of wrap up our discussion about interdisciplinary studies as a department and the different programs that uh, you could take one day, um, I'm sure you're already considering what sort of careers could I get or, or where could I go with that. So I have the pleasure of passing it back to Dr. Jarman, who's going to share just that. So greetings again, everybody. I, you can clearly see with us, so we have so much going on in this department. And depending on the exact pathway that you took um, along the way would determine where you go when you leave Lakehead uh, University. And so if you had chose a combination in interdisciplinary studies like chemistry, French, it's going to take you a very different place than if you chose uh, to combine criminology and psychology. Uh, so, but in general, I'll just say that we train a lot of people to be teachers and to teach all these different subjects that we've been, that they've been studying at university, either at the primary elementary, levels or at the high school levels and we also see that the kinds of skills that teachers develop are in demand in outside of schools as well 
Uh, so we have people working as corporate trainers. We have people going into all kinds of business walks and they use their ability to summarize crit uh, critical information and manage groups and do all the things that they learned in, in their education program in, in a wide variety of settings. Then if people have taken the criminology program, a lot of those people go into either policing or um, uh, criminal justice institutions. So we have probation officers and we have um, support staff at uh, for police organizations. We also have people working out in the community. And depending on exactly what their interests are, um, we have them work at some of our police forces in Canada. We we have one police force that works at the national level. So if they if you chose that option, you could be working anywhere in the country. Um, we and then we have the we Aurelia is home of the provincial Ontario Provincial Police. So they're right across the street. So we have people who are going into the OPP, Ontario Provincial Police, and the municipal forces. So there's lots of options and lots of demand for our graduates in criminology. And then the media, film and communication program, social media skills and media production skills and critical media analysis is integral to every organization. So we have students who are, and those internships really help them to get their feet. So we have people going in all kinds of different directions. The final thing I would say before I turn it back um, is that we, oh yes, we, Lakehead has a wide variety of graduate programs. So some of our folks go on um, to, to into grad school, both at Lakehead and at other universities. Law school is a lot, an option for not just the criminology students, but also the interdisciplinary study students, depending on their interests. And we have lots of entrepreneurs and people who either are working in family business or starting their own businesses. So we've got a, a wide variety of outcomes from these programs. And the last thing I'll say is that we have a career services officer. So people in their upper years are not left floundering on their own to make those, those uh, contacts to get them on their feet. Awesome. Well, thank you again to our entire panel for sharing more about your programs and also uh, discussing what makes them unique and, and what the Lakehead advantage is. I certainly learned more in today's session. I know our audience will feel the same. Um, with that being said, though, it concludes our formal presentation on the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies. Next, we're going to dive into the live question and answer period. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, I want to encourage you to comment below or connect with us on social media. We can be found at Lakehead International on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for watching once again, and hopefully we'll see you at the next live webinar. Bye for now.